Here we go now with a post-game uh, interview here, and it's going to be a very, very unique opportunity to meet three Latinas, three representatives from La Raza right here today on East LA Sports Scene. And it's coming after a huge win for the UCLA Bruins over Providence. The Lady Friars came in all the way from back east. But first of all, we're going to come up and uh, introduce, well, okay, we're going to introduce four <laughs> members of this very unique Division I softball team, a powerhouse in the world of women's softball. And here we go now with a good friend of ours, mm -hmm. Jelly Felix. How are you, Joan? How are you doing, Jelly? Doing pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah, we want to wish you a belated, mm -hmm. but a very, very good happy birthday. How are you doing? <laughs> Thank you. I'm doing good. And 20 years old. It's the <laughs> so old. So old. <laughs> <laughs> it's been about a month to the day. Uh, we were here on February 8th, and season had just started. Jelly, let's talk about the season thus far. We're one month in. It's the season within a season. The preseason's almost over. Pac-12 is getting ready to go. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing hanging in there and stuff. But I know that we're doing great. Okay. We're, you know, we have wind in our sails, and we're gonna go straight into packs. So I'm excited. I'm stoked. Okay. Everything. Yeah. Your fan base on East LA Sports Scene, and of course Facebook has just gone off Richter for us. It's been just a really, really good opportunity to know that the well wishers are out there, the supporters, all those uh, individuals that have followed your career from way back when to the present. They're very, very happy and very glad to see you in this opportunity here at UCLA. Your thoughts on the well wishes and the thoughts coming your way? Um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for everyone that, you know, would say good luck and everything like that or come out to support me. I really appreciate it. And I just love seeing all your faces out here in the stands and, you know, the yelling and the signs and <laughs> jelly all over the field. I love it. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. A winning record, 22-5 and five with this victory here. And, again, you close out a, a preseason getting ready for the Pac-12. Your thoughts on prep preparing for that? All I know is um, go get them. We're on our way. We're going to go get them. <laughs> okay. I'm going to ask you to step aside for a moment, Jelly. We're going to meet some of your teammates because it's a very unique. But don't go away too far. We're going to do We're going to do a goodbye at the end. But now next up here, very, like I said, four Latinas, uh, four representatives of our culture here playing Division I uh, softball. And we've had a chance, of course, to meet Jelly. And we're going to be as brief but as profound and deep as we can. Absolutely. But speaking out to Sam, Samantha. Yes, or Samantha. Sam, Samantha Duran. <laughs> And Samantha, welcome to our program. And, and how are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. This is awesome. It's amazing. Good. A very, very good lineup we see right here because you could represent at least uh, two thirds of a softball team at this Absolutely. level. And it's got to speak very, very highly of you and your family and your uh, your past and all the people that have helped you get to this uh, point here in your career. Your thoughts on being a UCLA Bruin? Oh, it was always a dream to be a Bruin. Um, here, family is everything, and especially you know being a Latina. I'm the oldest out of these four but okay. for them to come on board and just it's pride it's everything it's it's amazing and i could tell you that everyone loves our tamales that we bring during christmas time so right. it's pretty amazing but very, it's, it's a blessing very good and you have to be uh, representing uh, one of the teams here on ucla's campus here that uh, is in abundance we will rarely see one maybe two athletes from our culture from our race that are in here playing right. at this level here we have four, possibly even, is there someone else we're missing on the team? But at least four right now that we can say, look, those are our young ladies on their way to a great future. Your thoughts on playing this season, of course, and how's it going for you personally? And then, of course, academics. Uh, I think it stood out the most, actually, for us. I'm from Whittier, California, mm -hmm. and um, the younger teams who come and watch us, it, it, Hispanic they're all Latinas and and you know and we all get mixed up of who oh you're chewy you're, you're jelly you know you're Izzy but it's amazing and and playing for something bigger than yourself at UCLA but also playing for our culture and our mm -hmm. and the pride and to have those girls look up to us Absolutely. um just growing up around that and then coming over here to Westwood it, it's a culture shock but you know it's family family's always close and we're we have the blessings that our family comes down here and it's amazing. And you've chosen an academic pursuit of going into what type of career when you when you finish here? I'm um, actually thinking about law enforcement. Oh. Yeah, okay. uh, to be a sheriff. So, and that's amazing too. That, that's also family based. So, uh, I think uh, a nice. Uh, being a cop will be pretty awesome after this, to be okay. honest with you. Now, in, in terms of being recruited to come uh, to play here, uh, yeah. uh, Coach uh, Inouye Perez, of course, mm -hmm. Lisa Fernandez, all the people in the mix mm -hmm. of recruiting, you, the thoughts on, on looking back to that, what, what was the driving factor that made you decide to come to UCLA? I think the driving factor was definitely um, my my parents, you know, my father, and he, he knew that... 
being a Latina and being so small and, mm. and coming from Whittier, it was going to be a far-fetched to get here, but I, we know hard work and we know what it takes to be recognized and to stand out. So okay. I think looking back on it now, the hard work definitely paid off and, and also coming out here and making a statement and making a mark um, of who we are. And your role on the team, will you be playing in various positions, utility yes, or? Yes, you utility. I think what's amazing about this team is everyone is versatile. We can play anywhere at any time, uh, even you know the players. You, you would look at this team and think that people are on a set position mm -hmm. and that's uh, it's amazing that everyone could play absolutely anywhere. Okay, well, this is our first time to interview you, Samantha. Hopefully not our last. We want to thank, thank you for you coming so out. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Good luck for the rest thank of the season. And now we're speaking Hello. with? Jasmine Sosa. Jasmine Sosa. Yes. Boy, you're coming at me pretty hard with the names <laughs> and the players. It's so I'm very glad that uh, James Ibernas and the, the media staff here on the team allowed this to happen. We weren't certain yet. This is only our second time being here at one of the games. But we're looking for more to come back and profile you even more because of the importance and the stature that you have in our community. All eyes are on our players, male or female, to see where they can go with their careers, especially at UCLA, SC, you name it, Notre Dame. At this level, the eyes are on the prize. So we thank you for coming on, but let's talk a little bit about yourself, okay? And Jasmine, where do you come from and what position are you playing? Um, I actually was born in Bellflower, okay. eventually moved to Pomona, and now I'm in Claremont. Okay. But um, I'm a catcher, oh, and though okay. I am small, though we are small, actually, we are. We are mighty. <laughs> okay, and the recruitment, uh, the, the, again, the same question I pose to each one of you because it's different. Yes. Uh, Lisa Fernandez, Coach Inouye Perez, and their staff talking to you and your folks. Yeah. And what made that decision final that you were going to be a Bruin? I mean, it's always been a dream to be at UCLA, and I think just the person that Lisa is, the person that Coach I is, just these driven individuals, I think that's inspiring in itself just to be somebody great and, you know, coming from the race that we come from, mm -hmm. seeing my family go what they went through to get me here, I think it's an honor and I, it definitely was one of the driving factors is to be great, not only for myself, but for my family. Okay, and again, the high school and that preparation time when you were traveled player and you, you did all the things when you were young getting ready for, to, for this moment talk a little bit about that how, how you prepared for to, to be here um, I mean I grew up you know looking up to these women and I think just trying to be something great and constantly working on it constantly going to practice constantly taking the extra reps and right. all the extras really do pay off and I think that's just I mean, that was it. It was just doing what I needed to do to get to where I wanted to be. Okay. And the high school again you went to? Was I went to St. Lucie's in Glendora. Ah, yeah. there you go. That yes. That's the, the beginnings of yes. where it all, the dream uh, yes. became your reality now. But when you were younger, mm -hmm. and you were, of course, preparing uh, that type of environment to, to go out and play travel, mm -hmm. to, to get better and better. Yes, um, definitely. I mean, I started playing softball when I was eight. Grew up playing on rec teams, same thing, went to travel, ended up at St. Lucie's, which was okay. an all-girls Catholic school. Ended up, um, you know, playing with great people, and I think that was inspiring, just being around great individuals. Okay, Jasmine, we have to let you go. I know it's time to get for the post game with the team, but the last question, I always ask the players, because as they say, uh, we know that you're being held in high esteem, so the younger uh, young ladies, the yes. mijas, and sometimes yes. even the mijos, they're important no, yeah, because yes. they have dreams. But your advice to them, what, what can they or what should they do to continue to get better and to prepare to come to this moment here to play at a Division One school like UCLA? Um, I think, honestly, just following your dream and working hard. I mean, you're going to have a lot of moments where you're going to be discouraged. But I think continuing to just follow your dream, follow your passion, follow your heart, and do what it is that you want to do. Just work hard at it and go for it. Okay. Jasmine Sosa, well said and well spoken. Thank, Thank you, very you very much for your time. You too. Okay, and good luck to you the rest of the season. And now Hi. we're speaking with, hi, hello. Isabella Ordorica. Isabel Ordorica. 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 I go by Izzy, actually. Okay, Izzy, well, welcome to Eastern Sports Scene. Thank you. Uh, Izzy, uh, you've heard me speak to your, con your teammates here, but basically just a snapshot of you and what it took to become a UCLA Bruin and where did it start? Where did you have that passion for the sport and decide that, hey, scholarship or coming to a Division One school like UCLA is doable? Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually from Tampa, Florida, mm -hmm. and the dream started when I was very young uh, to become a Bruin. I've actually wanted to come here 
since I was very little, so it's always been my dream school uh, to play among the greatest. Okay. So um, as my teammates have touched on, just to play for Lisa Fernandez, you know, sure. Coach I, Coach Walker, all of these fantastic people, and to have the legacy of these amazing athletes and people come before me. And you, what year would you be in now? I'm a freshman. Oh, so, okay, so the coast-to-coast -coast yes. transition has been made, and yes. you're pretty comfortable now in, in, in California, right? I love it, yes. Okay, uh, Tampa, Florida, big city, lots of activity, a uh, lot of travel ball there. Is it comparable to what the young players do here, travel, get better as they're younger? Uh, yes, I'm very lucky. Actually, growing up in Tampa, softball is also very big there, mm -hmm. um, so played travel ball since I was nine years old and um, been coming to California uh you know, uh, pretty regularly wow. too uh, okay. for softball. Nice. So um, very happy to be in California now. Okay, and the position you uh, and the role you're playing here on the team? Outfield. Oh, any one in particular or um, left field? Okay. Now um, let's talk about your academics and the course of studies you're you're taking. Now, or are you undecided yet? Um, I am hoping to be a physician. Um, I'm actually getting into my prereqs now for okay. med school. Mm -hmm. And um, as far as a major, I'm English as of now, but not quite sure uh, okay. the route yet. Okay. And then on the East Coast, so of course, we have so many of our players and so many of our cultures, nationalities abound from Latin America. Mm -hmm. uh, in Florida, we know there's Nicaragua, and there's mm -hmm. every... every as you would say, every nation is represented in our country here in the United States of America. Can we ask your uh, roots, where you come yes, from? Yes, like my other teammates, I'm Mexican too. Okay. So it's very nice to have uh, my three other teammates here, all Mexicanas, and okay. we all are very and, close. And as I mentioned, that, that, that says a lot mm -hmm. for one team to have as many, and of course, in of course their um, progression to step up and to be um, integral players on this team, and it, it's, it's a process, we understand that. But uh, your thoughts on the season thus far, and what's looking forward to uh, and looking forward to the Pac-12. Um, this was a great weekend. We had a lot of fun. Um, as you can tell, just kind of in the dugout, like on the field, we're all bringing it together and uh, just can't wait for what Pac-12 has in store for us. We're going to get after it. Okay. Uh, Izzy, one more time. Oh. Odorica. Odorica, with the accent. Okay, Odorica. Sí. All yeah. right. Uh, we want to say thank you very much. Muchísimas gracias. And, and uh, we hope that the rest of the season will be as much as you want it to be. Thank you so much. And we'd like to come back and cover you a little bit more later. Thank you. Okay, there she is, the last of our four um, players are Latinas. We just pro profiled as quickly as we could, and we wish them all the best. So we're going to come back in a moment. Okay, here we are now with the winning pitcher in today's big victory over the Providence Friars, uh, and it's Ali Carta. We want to uh, welcome you to UCLA Sports Scene, Ali, and we want to uh, commend you on a great game, a near no-hitter, as they say, a one-hitter, but nonetheless. Nonetheless, you are the leading and driving force of the Lady Bru or the Bruins. Uh, let's talk about how you feel today after this big win. Um, it was great. I think it was a great team win all weekend. We were um, we were going after it and kind of keeping everything simple. So it was really nice to end the weekend strong and uh, keep it going and, and get it done in six. Twenty-two and five, the record. We'll talk about some numbers here, and but more importantly, eleven and three with the with your uh, uh, record, and uh, the season is just about half over. Your thoughts and expectations on the 2015 season. Um, I mean, it's only just beginning. I think this weekend was a, a huge uh, weekend for us and for the team and for even the viewers uh, to see what's to come. I think it showed a lot of what we can do this weekend. So I'm excited for what's to come. Mm -hmm. And um, like we tell our players, the best is yet to come. So there's a lot more that we're going to see this season. And um, playing here at UCLA uh, has been an experience and a career for you. Your thoughts on your um, uh, four years at UCLA and what's going to be onward for you? Um, I mean, it's been an amazing experience. I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. I wouldn't go anywhere else. Um, not only do I get the, you know, the great softball players by my side every day, I get great um, academic support every day. So it's the best of both worlds. And i um, not sure what my future holds, but I know it'll be great with the you know, UCLA diploma. So I'm excited. And speaking of the player that this tournament uh, was um, named after, the Stacy Wintberg, right? Mm -hmm. uh, her, her, in her honor, of course, uh, passed away because of cancer. But uh, this is her a moment to be remembered. Uh, does the coaching staff give you guys, uh, give the team some background about about the uh, momentous occasion of playing in her name? 
Yeah, we do. Um, her family comes out every every year for this tournament. Um, this year, her brother threw the first pitch, so it was really nice to hear stories from him and um, the coaching staff and everyone about Stacy. So um, we do take a minute and remember who was before us, and it kind of puts everything into pr into perspective. You know, she was a player here and died way too young, which is unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But we got to hear a lot of cool stories about her. Three-time national champion. Yes, yes, definitely. Okay, now Elk Grove, California, Pleasant Grove High School. Yeah. Uh, talk a little bit about that recruitment process. What was going on back then to attract you and to bring you here to UCLA? Um, yeah, I'm from Elk Grove, um, up north, a uh, small city just outside of Sacramento. Mm -hmm. um, I I grew up just you know working as hard as I could, and I never really had a dream school. But once okay. the minute I I came to UCLA to visit, I knew this is what the place I wanted to go. So okay. after that, um, the rest is history, I guess. But I just continued to work hard in high school, and I was fortunate enough to come here. And that passion for the game, uh, what what uh, point in your young life uh, did softball um, surface and say, hey, I, I want to play this game. Was there a family member, possibly father, brother, anyone in the immediate family that might have motivated you to play uh, softball? Uh, yeah, my, I mean, I started young, as everyone does, you know, probably five, six, playing t-ball, and then um, after a couple years, my dad started coaching me, and that's probably where it, you know, kicked into gear. He's mm -hmm. always been a huge motivation in my life, um, very positive guy, and he always, um, still to this day, you know, keeps me going and reminds me about all the positive things. So I think he's the one who who probably kept my passion going for so long okay and uh, now that you're here you have really the cream of the crop so to speak mm -hmm. with Lisa Fernandez right. as one of the coaches and I'm sure when the pitching strategies come up uh, you easily can speak to her and and as they say up your game or improve right. your game how has that experience been in terms of being able to speak to someone like that um, it's been awesome Lisa is the best in the game and to have her on the field with me every day is amazing. Um, she's actually came into play a lot more so for me this year so far, mm -hmm. and we've talked a lot, a lot more about um, how to approach the game and kind of what my mindset should be. And she's helped me a lot with, with, um, you know, I didn't start as well as I wanted to, and okay. she's got me right back to where I, you know, I, I should be going. So I can thank her a lot for everything she's done. Let's talk about uh, just kind of rewinding just for a moment because of the importance of the game today. It was another win, 22 and five, uh, and the game was halted after six innings, uh, eight nothing, the final score. But as they would say, in the midst of everything, you're throwing a no hitter. <laughs> Is does uh, the as they say the rule of um, uh, how would you call it uh, uh, teammates take effect when you're come back out and or go into the dugout after the inning. Uh, is there some type of a ritual there where we better not talk to, <laughs> to Ali right now. She's in the middle of a, a huge game and uh, obviously near a no hitter. Uh, can you tell us about what happened in the dugout? Right. Um, I mean, I don't think so. I mean, I think they're, I mean, kind of general rule of thumb. You don't say anything to okay. your teammate if they are throwing a hitter, you know, it's, mm -hmm. that's the jinx. You don't yes. jinx it. Um, but um, I mean, I am a very vocal and kind of playful person off the field okay. so I think they keep me going in that sense and yeah I don't think it'd be a, a not talk to her I think they, they keep me going <laughs> yeah. with keeping me loose and and yeah. playful in the dugout especially since this is uh, not a very novel thing you've already had two right. <laughs> this season <laughs> and here was a near third which uh, of course would captures anyone's attention uh, this covers women's softball uh, at division one level and any any other type of uh, level but to do that has got to be really an amazing uh, tribute to you because of your arm going through all the repetitions and there has to be that way to restore it and keep it keep it good anything you do to stay strong uh, while you're on the mound um, I mean I uh, I would consider myself a very physical person I like I work out a lot I try and do as much as I can physically so when I get in the game you know nothing's as hard as what I've put myself through during the week so um, and especially for the off season um, we try and just get after it as much as we can so I think that's what gives me my confidence and lets me keep going as much as I can two quick uh, areas to touch and we're going to we have to let you go it's the game's <laughs> over and you've been very nice to stick around and, and see us but uh, the first question would be about the the, the seasons uh, of course the full season being chopped up or cut into thirds we will call it preseason Pac-12 and then postseason you've completed the first third and uh, how are the Bruins uh, reacting right now and especially how are you feeling as one of the team leaders um, I think we're feeling good. I think um, after this weekend, it's been a um, kind of got us rolling even even more so. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm definitely excited. I think it's crazy that we're already done with the third. I'm a senior, so it's yeah. you know it's also a little sad that it's almost over. Yeah. So I think just keeping in mind that um, it is almost over and to just go for it and and you know do the best that we can in every aspect of the game. In every game now, Pac-12. 
as they say, money games. Right. All, it matters. Everything <laughs> counts. Exactly. Okay. Um, I mean, yeah, we we start with Utah, and they are a very good, scrappy team. So we mm -hmm. need to come out, um, come out banging, okay. and um, yeah, I think every every weekend matters for okay. for postseason, but not only for you know the record for ourselves. We need to. Um, prepare ourselves as, mu as much as we can for postseason. And of course, a lot of that preparation will come from Coach um, Kelly Anyway Perez and Lisa Fernandez and the coaching staff. Right. A qu quick sidebar for them because they keep things moving mm -hmm. and they keep the personnel ready to go and there's injuries and whatnot, but they, they have to do a masterful job to keep everybody ready. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, you know, we have a lot. We have a lot of people on this team who can play uh, many different positions. So mm -hmm. for them, it's tough. I mean, it's a good problem to have, but it's really tough trying to see who's going to play where and mm -hmm. who's hitting and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. So it's a good problem to have, but we have a lot of people who are in and out and and get it done in there. So it's it's nice. Last question, Allie, before we let you go, your course of studies, because that is your key to right. the future as well, <laughs> yeah. your academics. And what course of studies did you choose or the majors? Uh, I'm a sociology major. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. With possibilities of at some point in your future to be in social work or? Um, I don't think so, but I think um, when I'm done, I think I'm going to try and go back and maybe coach for a couple of years okay. to get my master's degree. So mm -hmm. I think... Um, being a social major has definitely taught me to write papers, so that'll be good for a master's program, I think. <laughs> so. All right, Ali Carter. We thank, thank you, you very much. Thank you yeah. for giving us this opportunity to get to know you just a little bit more. Thank you. Okay, yes. and good luck, Pac-12 and beyond. Thank you okay, very much. thank you, Ali Carter. And now for Eric Sarney, Rico Cabrera, Senior. Thanks for watching this edition. Special coverage of the UCLA Bruins winning their 22nd game of the season very easily over the Providence Friars, and that will do it. Coming to you from Easton Field here at UCLA campus. We want to thank you for watching and keep on watching and liking and sharing us among your friends and keep the word going to East LA sports scene we're on a mission to bring you the best that we can in terms of sports production for you and your friends and your families take care until we see you till the next time bye bye Ricochet, you take your aim, fire